Christy here at Tinker Art Studio in Boulder, Colorado. I hope you enjoy our new free kids art workshop series, and if you do, be sure to like and subscribe. At any point during the workshop, hit that pause button when you're ready to work on your own projects. Come on back when you're ready. I won't move on without you. Now, let's get ready to make. <music> In today's workshop, we are going to be working with clay. Clay is such a fun material to work with because there are so many possibilities of the types of things you can build and create with clay. I'm here in our ceramic studio where we like to use pottery wheels to throw clay on the wheels to create things like mugs and vases and bowls and different kinds of vessels. We are going to be using air dry clay today in this workshop. This is Crayola air dry clay. If you have another type of air dry clay at home, that will also work well for this workshop. Now let's take a look at the other materials that we need. In addition to clay, we will also need a piece of paper and a marker in this workshop. A Sharpie works really well. A washable marker will also be just fine. Later, we'll be painting our artwork. So we'll need paints and paint of any variety that you have will work well, as well as a paint setup, such as a paint palette or another tray for your, to pour your paints, a water bucket and paintbrush. We will also be using yarn. So I have yarn and scissors. I am excited to share a book with you in just a moment, but I want to remind you that if you would like to move ahead past the read aloud, I know that there are people of all different ages joining us. You're welcome to just toggle ahead and join us when we start creating our artwork. The Shape of My Heart, written by Mark Sparing and illustrated by Elise Patterson. This is the shape that we are, the shape of you and me. This is the shape of our eyes, and these are the shapes we might see. This is the shape of the sun coming up to brighten our day. And these are the shapes that chirp and tweet and flitter and flutter away. This is the shape of our mouths. Now, what would you like to eat? Something hot or something cold? Something savory or something sweet? This is the shape of my shoes. And this is the shape of your feet. And these are the shapes that pass us by on a noisy, busy street. This is the shape of my hand, the hand you hold on to. Where are we going and what will we see? Let's look at the shapes at the zoo. This is the shape I hear you with. Let's be on our way. And this is the shape we come back to at the very end of the day. This is the shape of the pillow where you lay your sleepy head. And this is the shape of the toy that you cuddle up with in bed. This is the shape of the moon and these are the shapes of the stars. And this is the shape I love you with. This is the shape of my heart. I really 
like to start by reading this story because it reminds us that shapes are all around us all the time. I'm going to invite you to take a look around your space right now and see if you can find any shapes. What shapes do you see? Hmm. In the space where I am, I see circle shapes back here on the pottery wheels and the stools. I also see a rectangle shape on the side of that basket up there that's um, perched up on that shelf. And I see uh, some leaf shapes coming down over here um, off of the plant that's hanging down. That's a really interesting shape too. Now artists often use shapes to, as a starting point to our artwork, whether we're working with a painting or um, whether we're doing a drawing or working with clay like we're going to in today's workshop. So I wanna invite you to choose a shape that you would like to use as a starting point for your artwork today. The shape that I am going to choose is a heart shape because I felt really inspired by the story and I really love that last page on the end where the heart um, has all the other shapes inside of it. And for me, a heart uh, represents or um, makes me think of all the people and things that I love and things that I really care about. And that's something that I would like to incorporate into my artwork today. Now, you don't have to create a heart-shaped piece today. You are the artist, you get to decide. If you have another shape that you would like to use, I would encourage you to use that shape. In just a moment, we're going to start with that shape that you've chosen and turn it into a really cool piece of clay artwork. Let's get started. Now that you have that shape in mind, we are gonna go ahead and get our paper and marker. I'm gonna use a Sharpie. A washable marker would also work just fine. And I am going to draw my heart shape right onto this paper. I want my shape to fill up most of the paper. I drew mine kind of right in the center and really nice and big. Now remember, you might like to use a heart shape or you might like to use a different shape and that is totally fine. What I'm drawing with my shape right now, and the important thing to remember as you're drawing, is I'm only drawing the outside of my shape. I am going to use this as a guide to fill in my artwork with clay. I just opened up my bucket of Crayola air dry clay, and I'm gonna move my shape to the side and start with a piece of clay. I like to, in order to, um, to get a small piece of clay, I twist my hands like this. Now this is still a pretty big piece of clay. Um, I'm going to twist it again and use a little bit of a smaller piece. Now I'm rolling my clay into a sphere or a ball between my hands before I roll it back and forth, back and forth to form a coil. Next, I want to make that coil quite a bit longer than it is. So I put it down on the table and I'm rolling it from the tips of my fingers to the bottom of my palm. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm moving my hands to this side and then into the middle and then to the other side to get a nice even coil. When it is a little smaller than your pinky, maybe half the size of your pinky, that would be a good size to stop rolling and we're ready to go ahead and use this coil. I am going to lay my coil down right over the line that I just created on with my Sharpie on my paper. If I have a bend in my shape, I'll just bend my coil up. Now I need to make another little coil to finish off that spot there. I'll take some more clay. I probably don't need too much for that part. Roll it into a ball and then get started rolling my coil again. Rolling it between my hands 
and then on the table, back and forth from the tips of my fingers to the middle or the bottom of my palm. Over on this side, in the middle, over to this side. Now I'm going to lay that clay down and finish tracing the shape that I made. When I get here and I have extra, I am just going to pinch between my fingers to pinch it apart. Now I'm going to just kind of gently push the connections together where one coil stopped and the next one started. But later I'll be attaching all my clay together so I'm not too worried about um, getting it really nice and smooth just yet. Now I have this extra coil, so I'm going to use it to start filling in my shape. And I like to fill in my shape by rolling coils into spirals. And then I'll find a good spot to tuck that coil. Next, I'll keep rolling coils until I have enough coils and enough spirals to fill my entire shape. So let's do one more together before you are welcome to pause this video and work on creating all your coils to add to your shape. If some coils are a little bit thicker and others are a little bit thinner, that is okay too. Now with this one, it's a really long coil, so the spiral that I make might be really, really big. If you would like a big spiral in your shape, then long coils will make big spirals. If, you're, would, if you'd like your spirals to be a little smaller, like that one takes up a lot of space, so if I wanted it to be smaller, I could always just unroll it, pinch it off, and make a smaller spiral instead. And then roll this one up for another small spiral. A little bit of my clay broke off right there. No problem, I can either just set it to the side or just keep it rolled up with my spiral. It doesn't quite fit right there, so I'm gonna take off a little bit to help it fit right there. Now this one, I might be able to, it's kind of like putting together a puzzle that you're building as you're going. I could probably tuck a little tiny spiral right there into that little space. Now as you keep adding your spirals to the inside of your shape, you will notice that you'll have some holes like that where it would be actually really hard to fit a teeny tiny spiral right inside there. That's okay, just leave those for now. I'll show you what to do with those next. Before you get started, I want to show you just one other idea. If you have another idea of how you would like to fill your space with clay, like maybe you want to, instead of doing spirals, maybe you want to use coils or these kind of long snakes of clay that I'm rolling to continue um, like to build concentric shapes or shapes that fit inside of one another all the way around. You could see how I could build a heart here and then a smaller heart in the inside, smaller, smaller, smaller. That would also make a really interesting design or pattern on your artwork. Maybe you want your spirals to separate out your shape or be laid down more like this. There are all different ways that you can use your clay to fill in your shape, and I would encourage you to do that if you have other ideas. I am going to keep building my shape with all of these spirals, and then show you how to fill in those little tiny gaps. Now that you've filled in your entire shape with coils or that are wrapped in spirals or other designs, I wanna show you how we're going to address these gaps that are in the middle of the shape. I'm going to take 
little pieces of clay and roll little spheres or balls of clay. And then I'm going to use that little ball that I just rolled to plug up those holes or those spots that are empty. I want to be sure that I use clay to fill in all that empty space so that when I start to attach all the clay together, there's plenty of clay to be able to smear together as we attach all of these pieces. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. I'm going to continue by rolling little balls or little spheres of clay and using them to plug up or fill in all of the little spaces where I see white of my paper showing through. I'm even going to oops, roll little teeny tiny ones and put them in little spots like this where the bigger ones can't fit. Now in spaces that are very, very small, like right there and maybe at the tip of the bottom of my heart right here, that's okay. I don't need to add more clay to those really small spaces, but any medium to kind of large size openings, I definitely want to add um, little balls or little spheres of clay to. So go ahead and fill in all those spaces so that you have a whole finished shape that is filled with clay. Now that you've filled your whole shape with clay, we are going to start smearing or smoothing this clay down. And to do that, we're gonna smear it together using our fingers as our tool. I like to use the side of my thumb oftentimes when I'm smearing clay together. And I'm kind of pushing and smushing and smearing, trying not to change the shape of my, the outside um, of my shape too much but really kind of dragging this clay together. And it is a really interesting part of this process because it looks like we're totally messing up our artwork, doesn't it, as we smear it together. In a moment, you'll see the big reveal and you'll see how we're not actually ruining all that hard work we just did by smearing our clay together. So I'm kind of smushing, pushing down with my thumb some, pulling clay from one part of a spiral to another with my thumb, with my pointer. Our hands are excellent tools to use whenever we're working with clay. So I'm gonna tell you a little secret about why I'm doing this. This is actually going to be the back side of my artwork. And in just a moment, after I feel like I've really smushed all my clay together, and notice I'm just doing this with my fingers, I'm not even using any water right now. Because this clay is nice and soft, and as long as I give it a good kind of push and smush around with my fingers, I don't need to use water to attach it. I'm gonna find spaces like right here where the clay is not blended together yet and just kind of gently push it around. A little more up here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So now I am going to hold my hand on my clay, flip my paper over, peel my paper off to see the front side of my artwork. Woohoo, check it out. You get this really neat image of these spirals and even those spaces where I filled it in with those spheres of clay also look really cool. If you used a washable marker instead of a permanent marker, what you'll notice is you will likely see some of that marker on your clay because the clay kind of picked up um, the, the washable marker. 
in a while after our clay dries we're going to be painting it so you will paint right over where that marker is showing if marker showing on yours and you won't see that anymore while our clay is still nice and wet we are going to take a piece of wire or if you don't have a piece of wire you can also use a paper clip and open it up and just bend your wire into a u shape we're going to push this in the top of our clay to add as a hanger and i'm pushing it in trying to get it kind of right in the center now see it's popping through um, on this side i'm just going to kind of wiggle it backwards so that it goes right in the center of my piece i shouldn't see it on the back side or on the front side now my clay cracked a little bit right there as i was working i'm going to take just a little sip of water on my finger not much at all and just rub it over that spot that was cracked if you have any spots that are that are cracked on your artwork you can just take a little sip of water and rub on those spots and it will smooth those cracks right out I do want to caution you, however, if you take a lot of water and rub it on this clay, the clay will just get very saturated and kind of um, soggy and messy, and you'll, you won't see the image quite as well if you start blending it together too much. Now that we have our hanger, and what this is going to do is when this clay dries, it will shrink a little bit, and it will shrink around the spot on the wire where it's pushed into the clay so that this hanger will be stuck in there really tightly and it will support the whole weight of the clay and once it's dry you'll be able to hang it up on the wall using this hanger our clay does need to lay flat to dry so we are going i would invite you to set it aside let it dry completely and once it's dry we'll come back in and paint it now, while I'm waiting for my clay to dry, I would like to show you something you might like to do using yarn. I'm gonna show you how to use yarn to make a palm or a pom-pom. Now, some of, uh, some of you might have a palm maker at home and palms are kind of like this. I made this one earlier today where we use yarn to, I, I think of this as kind of like a little starburst or just a little pop of color. It's really fun to just add as an embellishment to some of our artwork. So I thought I'd show you how to make a palm today. And then later you can hang that palm from the side of the wire or the hanger and just add a little something to your artwork if you'd like. So to make a palm without a palm maker, we can also make one right on our, with our hands. I am going to start wrapping yarn around my fingers. Now notice that I'm keeping my fingers nice and wide. Do your best to keep space between your fingers. Really hold your fingers out where you can see through them and there's space between them. If you wrap your yarn too tightly, or even as you start going, you can already see that I'm pulling this finger closer to this one. So naturally your fingers are gonna start coming closer together. So be sure to start with them out pretty wide. Now I'm gonna stop right about there. If you've made palms before, you might know that the more you wrap, the fluffier and thicker your palm will be. But if you wrap so much that it's hard to get in between these spaces, it's just kind of tricky to take the palm off of your hand. So I'm gonna trim right there and leave this, uh, leave this yarn wrapped on my fingers. And actually before I started this, I should have, it would be a little easier than doing it now, cut a long piece of yarn. This is probably about two feet or 24 inches of yarn that I just cut. Now this is where it would be really helpful to have an adult or a friend help you or a sibling help you um, take the yarn off of your hand. I strung this long piece of yarn in between my middle finger and my ring finger, right in the middle of the yarn that's wrapped around my hand. And I am going to tie that yarn in a knot. I'm trying to just do it by myself. It would be easier 
if you had an adult or someone to help you. And I'm gonna squeeze it really tight while all the yarn is still on my fingers, tying a square knot, which is like the first step to tying your shoes twice. See if I can do it. And squeezing it as tight as you can, as tightly as you can, so that the yarn is cinched together right in the middle. Yay, I did it. Now I'm gonna take it off of my fingers and use my scissors to cut all those loops. And I'm just cutting right through the loops on both sides. Here's a few more loops. Turn it on this side, cut the loops. I am being careful not to cut off this long string. One more loop. I think I got them all. And I have this kind of fun starburst palm that I might like to hang on my clay piece. Now, when I hang mine up, I'm just gonna use one string to hang it. So I'm gonna trim the second string off like that. If you've made palms before, you might also know that you can always trim your palms by giving them a little haircut and that will make them a little bit kind of fluffier and a little more full. You also don't have to trim your palm. You can leave it just the way it is. I think I like mine about like that. So when you are satisfied with your palm, you can set it to the side and take a look and see if your clay is getting a little bit drier. Once our clay is dry, we can go ahead and start painting it. When I'm ready to paint my artwork, I'm going to choose what color or colors I would like and pour my paints. Today, I'm choosing to just paint my whole heart purple but you might like to paint your artwork different colors, one solid color, or maybe change and paint all the spirals different colors or where you have the coils. That would be pretty neat too. What I wanna show you about um, pouring paint is it will be really helpful to pour some white in with the paint that you're using. So I poured a pretty generous amount of white in there with my purple, and then I'm gonna use my paintbrush to mix it up. I might have overfilled my well a little bit and it's trying to fall out the side. That's okay. Using white in with your paint or mixing white in with all the colors that you use is going to make your paint much of a, a more opaque color and kind of a stronger and brighter color to use on your artwork so that you won't see through it quite as much. It won't be quite as thin when you put it on. I am using my paint to just paint the surface of my clay. Now, my clay is actually still a little bit wet. So you might notice that um, you're kind of, I'm kind of, you can kind of see through where I'm painting. And that's because the clay still has a little bit of water in it rather than being totally dry. If you wait for your artwork to be totally dry before you paint, you'll have a nice surface to be painting on. And you won't, your paint will um, stick to it a little bit better than mine is right now. I like to always paint all the way around the edges. I'm not going to turn my heart over and paint the backside because for me, I'm gonna be hanging this on a wall and I won't see the backside of my artwork. If you would like to paint the back side of your artwork, you absolutely should. Just let the, your paint on the front side completely dry before you turn it over to paint on the back side. Once your paint is dry, you can tie your palm onto your hanger. I'm going to use a square knot to tie my palm on which again is the first step to tying your shoes twice. You might like to think about if you want your palm to hang really far down or just off the bottom of your artwork and kind of adjust the length of your yarn before you tie that knot. 
I'll trim off the extra yarn, not trimming too close to the knot so that it doesn't fall out. And now I'm ready to hang my work. Now all that's left to do is find a great spot to hang your work. Thank you so much for following along today. I look forward to seeing you next time.